Friday, March 5th, 2021, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So the financial markets seem to be uh, in turmoil under the surface uh, as Powell uh, failed to deliver yesterday. And we're going to talk about that today and also about some other things about the gold and silver market, what's going on there. Uh, about what happened uh, in 2008 with the gold and silver market. Uh, we're going to look at inflation and, of course, at the Federal Reserve, what would happen if the Federal Reserve did not come to the rescue of the system. And it's very ironic that we're talking about this as the markets have just turned from an all-time high, as the economy seems to be <laughs> going gangbusters, uh, economy is on fire. We're hearing that there's going to be a huge recovery because we've got the uh, you know what and everything else. So uh, the term fail uh, to deliver is appropriate here, <laughs> not just for Powell, uh, but also for the Treasury market. We're going to look into that. The Treasury market, if you have heard of Exter's uh, inverted pyramid, is at the base of the fiat currency system. It is the base. Of course, after treasuries and cash, gold is at the base. But uh, it's what gives um, the system its liquidity. And if the treasury market is in trouble, then uh, the whole system is in trouble. And I think that's what uh, we are experiencing right now. Of course, you probably won't hear about that on CNBC or Fox News or whatever mainstream channel you might watch. To be honest, I don't watch and haven't watched those mainstream channels for many years, <laughs> maybe for over a decade now, and uh, I don't miss it. So uh, let's get to Powell. He said yesterday people were expecting him to come out and uh, extend the SLR. What's the SLR? It's not a Mercedes car. Well, it's basically extending uh, the rule that uh, from the BIS or the Basel rules that uh, banks don't have to maintain any reserves. Uh, There's talk uh, before yesterday that he was going to extend that. I think it uh, that uh, zero requirement ends at the end of this month. Didn't talk about that. He didn't talk about uh, Operation Twist, which is basically... Uh, taking a shorter term paper on their balance sheet of the Federal Reserve uh, to buy longer term paper to drive the uh, longer term yields lower. Didn't talk about twist, didn't talk about yield curve control, which is basically setting a peg for interest rates and not letting the market drive those rates above that peg. Uh, and sometimes having to do QE to do that. He didn't talk about uh, increasing QE. And he actually said that inflation was going to increase, but it was going to temp be temporary. And the, apparently the market, that's what scared the market off. We saw the 10-year yield spike above uh, 1.5%. It went to 156, I think. We saw gold and silver get hit again. We saw the stock market uh, get hit. Uh, but uh, I tweeted because I, I saw people uh, saying that. And, and, and I thought to myself, last week, uh, in his testimony uh, in front of Congress, I remember him saying exactly the same thing uh, about inflation. He said that it, it was temporary. It was going to pick up uh, because of base effects. And then it, it was, was going to come down. So he's not worried about inflation. But it seems like the market and investors are. And, and I also saw there, uh, there's an article here on Zero Hedge from yesterday. As prices explode, when will the clueless Fed finally turn hawkish? Question mark. And it says, uh, but the best snapshot of inflationary sentiment comes from Google Trends, which was quite clear. Searches for inflation are the highest they have been this century. So there you go. Google Trends inflation, the highest uh, they have been in terms of searches. So we might say, well, if the Fed turns hawkish, starts raising rates, well, they also have to stop doing QE because QE is uh, equivalent to uh, cutting rates. If they turn hawkish, 
while that's going to be negative for, for gold and silver, uh, maybe in the short term, but what it will do, it will just totally collapse the U.S. economy. It will totally collapse the stock market, especially the NASDAQ uh, index. As you can see here, we are at uh, key uh, technical levels. And why do I say the NASDAQ? What's it got to do with the economy? Well, that's what the U.S. economy is been driven by, by financial assets, by the bubble. And if they do turn hawkish, everything is going to collapse. And I would uh, dare to say that the dollar eventually would collapse as well. Some people might say, how can you say that? <laughs> if things collapse, the dollar is going to go strong, maybe initially, but the dollar is not what it used to be in the 1920s or early 30s. It isn't gold. Uh, the, the dollar is a, a debt instrument. And what has the U.S. got <laughs> in spades right now? Well, it's got like a 20% deficit budget deficit it's got like a hundred and thirty percent debt to gdp uh, we've seen the national debt uh, go over 28 trillion so if interest rates stock market uh let's say if interest rates or yields of course uh, spike and keep going up and the stock market um, implodes um, yeah everything is gonna <laughs> collapse and even uh, tax receipts are going to go lower uh, the fed is going to have to reverse very quickly or print money it's going to be a huge mess <laughs> and uh, do i really want to be holding anything that has a counterparty risk any financial asset in such an environment no <laughs> I, I like to uh, hold on to my gold and silver and I saw a tweet yesterday. Someone said, oh, um, <laughs> I'm ready to go uh, sell my gold and buy some 10-year notes. Uh, I thought that was a good uh, tweet. Do you really want to do that? Do you want to go out there, sell your gold or silver and start buying 10-year notes, 30-year bonds? I don't. <laughs> you know, this is just uh, algorithms that haven't uh, woken up to things. So what about the other option, the Fed? has to actually come to the rescue which is something they do all the time <laughs> but you never know in the world you never know when when things will change but yes if they come back it's just gonna inflate things even more <laughs> if they announce more qe or twist or yield curve control uh, yes uh, i think the stock market might pick up again I think precious metals would definitely do well, but uh, also uh, treasuries, uh, the yield might come down a, a bit from where we are. But if prices and commodity prices keep going up, uh, that's also going to end in tears because the dollar is going to go down the tubes. So uh, because people will lose confidence in the dollar because they're going to have to print even more. So whatever happens, I think it's... Uh, the Federal Reserve is between a rock and a hard place, I would say. So, um, what else? Yes, I think we need to cover what's going on in the Treasury market. It's to do with the repo again. I know in September 2019, the repo rate spiked to 10%. And that meant that uh, the Wall Street financial uh, institutions didn't trust each other. They wouldn't even uh, lend money to each other uh, with secured, lo you know, secured loans with treasuries as, as collateral. They wouldn't even do it for 10% because, well, they did, but that's where it spiked to 10%, even though the Fed funds, the overnight rates uh, were around two and a quarter. But this time we're getting a negative repo rate, which is just as bad. Um, and uh, the term fail to deliver, that, that's where it comes in. And it's very complicated, the repo market. Even I sometimes have trouble understanding it. But what's happening here is that just like GameStop, um, when uh, you need to sell something short, you need to borrow it. So that's what uh, these uh, 
speculators or investors are doing, they're trying to borrow treasuries through the repo market in order to short it. So uh, Zero Hedge uh, says yields are exploding, shorts are piling on, the repo market is breaking and the Fed is now just days away from yield curve control. So the repo has dropped to minus four and a quarter. So how come? Well, because the people who are trying to borrow these treasuries in the repo market to short it, uh, they can't find uh, the the people who are lending it to them are not delivering the treasuries. They're failing to deliver, so they're having to pay a fine to the people who borrow, and that fine is reflected in that repo rate minus four and a quarter. Uh, usually, it doesn't go below three percent. So you might be asking why are there aren't there enough treasuries? Well, we don't know. It, it could be because. Uh, there's not much liquidity in, in the financial markets. It could be because with, with the Fed having bought so many treasuries for its balance sheet, there's not too many uh, treasuries in the secondary market. So it's a huge uh, trouble. I, I think it's a lot worse than people are probably uh, letting it, it on in the financial media, mainstream media. And uh, the bond market, treasury market, is many times bigger than the stock market. And as I said, it's at the base of the system, Exeter's uh, inverted pyramid. So yes, now to gold uh, and back to gold in 2008, because uh, I, I know probably uh, a lot of you are wondering, you know, what's going on. Gold is supposed to be a, a safe store, a, a value is supposed to be a safe haven. And it is. Uh, right now, I think it's more important than ever that you hold on to your uh, physical silver and gold. Uh, there's no counterparty there. We're outside the system. We shouldn't be worried. Uh, yes, the prices, the paper prices are worrying, uh, but they shouldn't really. Uh, this is the first time, uh, really, it, it, it's as bad as in uh, 2008 in terms of what's going on. I already had gold back then. <laughs> I had been stacking since 2002. And I was sitting in front of my screens uh, in the city of London. Uh, I was in the system and I was watching it. And, and I remember uh, when gold went up uh, to 1032 uh, in March of 2008. That's the day Bear Stearns had to be uh, taken over by JP Morgan and the Federal Reserve. And gold topped at that level. Um, that was an all-time high at the time. It had just broken through the uh, 1980 high uh, a few months before from at around 850. And then as you see here, it, it, it dropped throughout, throughout the crisis, even through the Lehman crisis, uh, even though it did spike. Uh, by um, the middle of October, it had dropped to 680. So it was a big drop. It was more than a 30% drop. And I remember that at the time, the premiums to buy uh, sovereigns, real gold or silver in London were just as bad as they are now, if not worse, a little worse. I think uh, gold was 10%. Silver, you, couldn't, you could barely get any. And it was puzzling because the, uh, the, the system was in trouble. Everything uh, after Lehman collapsed, uh, everyone was thinking, well, who's going to be next? It's going to be Morgan Stanley, then Goldman Sachs, then JP Morgan. It was all the dominoes were falling and gold was dropping. It didn't make sense. But as you can see, it didn't last that long. It bottomed there uh, in the middle of October and then it just started going up. It, 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 and it never really stopped until really we made the high in 2011. It went up uh, kind of almost... Uh, more than three times from that bottom. So that's where I think we are right now. There is a crisis out there. Uh, I think the crisis started really in 2019, in September, in the repo market. And it's been going on since then. Yes, last year in March, there was the same kind of thing going on with the precious metals market. We went down to 1450 and then we quickly rebounded. Um, so all we have to do is sit tight, be right and sit, sit tight. Do you really want to, 
to finance these banks because that's what you're going to do going back into the fiat currency system. Do you really want to be in the system that is in trouble? And believe me, it is. So with that, uh, let's look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.30 a.m. Uh, London time. Yes, gold got down to uh, paper gold, <laughs> got down to 1687 overnight. Uh, right now we're at uh, 1693. The high, not surprisingly, is 1700. So uh, silver got down to 2502. Uh, right now we're at 2520. Uh, so yeah, we're down slightly here in gold and silver. The stock market, though, is continuing to go lower. Usually when the stock market goes down, uh, like uh, we've seen in the last few days and we've seen, you know, the last few weeks, uh, the bond market go goes up and yields go down. But what we're getting now is really worrying. <laughs> it's not good. You're getting uh, bond prices dropping, yields going up and the stock market going down. It's completely, uh, it hasn't happened uh, forever, <laughs> probably uh, I don't know, maybe in the early 90s it used to be a little more normal. Uh, not even. Probably uh, this is more like in the 70s. So the Dow right now, Dow Future is down 170, half a percent. NASDAQ is down 100 points, three quarter of a percent. Uh, S&P is down two thirds of a percent or 24 points. Yeah, we're seeing the dollar continue to strengthen here. Uh, the, the pound's down a quarter of a percent at 138.58. The, the euro is down a third at 119.30 dollars strong versus the yen at 108.36. Uh, the dollar versus the yuan is at 648.40. So even versus the yuan, the dollar has been picking up a bit. Uh, uh, high grade copper is up half a percent, just above $4. Uh, but interestingly, <laughs> crude oil is going uh gangbusters if you want to call it if you want to use that term uh, we're up over one percent at 64.50 so great for consumers not uh, higher uh, gas prices uh, what about the bond market yeah well the bond market is very important of course uh, as we know so the 10-year yield uh, is down slightly it's down one basis point at 154. So there you go. Uh, we also have non-farm payroll today. Uh, that's a big number always. Uh, we're gonna look look to see where that comes out. Uh, I think uh, jobless claims were pretty bad yesterday. About 750 people, uh, 50,000 people still claiming for unemployment. So uh, it smells like stagflation. But uh, again, uh, the Fed is between a rock and a hard place. And I think uh, we just need to uh, sit tight and uh, not do much <laughs> unless, of course, you, you're heavily exposed in a leveraged way to the financial financial system. If you're not, you, you're just looking at it and, uh, you know, with peace of mind, hopefully, if you've got your physical uh, gold and silver. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.